So let's take a look at the Gravity Sketch Smooth tool. So this is the ability to average out vertices. What that means is it will it will manipulate the points or the vertices in the model and make them smoother without adding more geometry. It's common in most 3D programs and we have it here in Gravity Sketch. So before we dive into the tool, I want to make a model that we can use for this exact purpose. So I'm just gonna sculpt a head here or model a head. If you don't want this and you just wanna know about the smooth tool, then skip ahead to the, the number noted there. Um, and, and what I'll do is I'll work through this. It will only take about three minutes, um, but basically we'll make a head suitable for the need for this job. So I started with two planes. It doesn't matter if you use a box, a sphere, um, basically, it's just some kind of object that is made of polygons so we can start manipulating them. So I always mirror them. So I just put mirror on and that basically means I can just work on one side. And in this case, it was a plane. So I just started using the split tool and, and deleting polygons out so that I can construct a basic head. So we're going to work on a loop for a mouth, a loop for the eyes in a few minutes, and then in this case, I, I made the mouth sealed at the back. That just makes it easier for, for, for me to work with if there's no hole there. Um, you can adjust the lighting if you need. If you're not getting the, the kind of look and feel that you want, it's good to play around with that lighting to, to, to make sure that the model, what we call reads, that means that means it looks good in its environment as you're modeling it. So the big thing that I'm doing is I'm trying to limit the amount of polygons I'm using. So I'm just using things like the split tool, um, and the extrude tool and it basically crafts the shape that I want and then wherever I want that loop effect so around an eye a nose a mouth an ear then I'll, I'll, I'll make it um, w with a, an extrusion and then I'll, I'll make it into loops and then um, manipulate that area so the smooth tool will become really really crucial f for this kind of work if you want to do this kind of work now i quickly made an eye and in gravity sketch it was just a quick uh, one quick way to do it is to make uh, the whites of the eye the pupil the iris uh, just as, as shapes and um, smush them all together and just combine them and that means uh, not that i would use that longer term but that allows me to model around it and that's the crucial part is that i want to know where the curve of the eyeball is. And you can see there, um, as, I, as I'm pushing and pulling the points around, it really clearly helps having an eyeball in there. Now, in this video, we're gonna look at obviously smoothing and with having a model like this, that's got one or two levels of subdivision on and not too many points, it's an ideal way for me to show you how to use the smooth tool. The next video after this will be all about the soft selection and we're not covering that in this particular video. So for the smooth tool, we've given ourselves a good averaged out number of points, not, not, not loads and loads of points in one area, which you never should do. And the model is just, just with an eye, a couple of eyes and a mouth and a nose, gives us plenty to work with. Okay, so we've got our constructed head. So let's have a look at the ability to be able to smooth it. So uh, we can take the model, uh, so the, the base mesh, and we'll hit the blue button on our dominant non-dominant hand. And now you can see, um, as we've seen in the time lapse, you've got the uh, the points are all visible. And now what we want to do is kind of smooth them out. And why do we want to do that? So if you look here, let's zoom into this eye area. There's some nastiness going on all around here. Um, it doesn't look uh, particularly good around the nose. And there's this quite extreme um, uh, crease at, at the side. So before we go any further, and what I would normally do quite the way uh, through a lot of this kind of modeling as, is I would use the smooth, smooth uh, function, which I haven't done with this head so far, and, and I haven't done that deliberately, so I can show you how. So again, as I say, grab the model, in a grip, dominant hand, blue button to activate the point so we can see what's going on. And there's a couple of ways to do this. So I'll show you the, the, the slower way, first of all. So what you want to do is on your dominant hand, you wanna look for the tool icon, and then you have your little sliding toolbar. And if you come over here to the first one, you get smooth. And then you get like a lollipop effect. So you get a sphere on the end of your um, controller. 
Um, and I don't usually use this. I, I, I use the second method most, but this is this is one way for you to learn. And the, the um, sliding that up and down gives you an area of effect. So the bigger it is, the more dots it covers, and that means you'll get it on, on, on more of an area. So if I want to just smooth a small area of this corner mouth here, so a smallish kind of sphere, and then I just li literally with my uh, trigger, just basically pull and what it's doing is as it, as you can see the more um, verts that it covers or vertices that it covers the more effect of smoothing what it's doing is it's pulling them out and averaging them out so I've made my brush bigger cover all of them and then do it again you can see that it's tightening so as you work round you can see the mesh is tightening and uh, th that's like the quickest simplest way um, but it's not actually the quickest because you have to call the tool. I'll show you how to do this without having to call the tool. But that gives you most of what you want. And as you can see, it's just averaging ev everything down, uh, you, you know, and it's and, and it's basically uh, tightening it down as, as, as much as, uh, you know, you, well, it, depending on how much you press with your trigger, it's up to you to see, uh, you know, how much you want. A large brush, I won't do it, I'll, I'll show it you, I'll undo it would do all of it like that and it would tighten the whole thing. It basically gives you a really tight, smooth mesh all over. So be careful using that. You might use that early on, but once you've got some kind of definition in a, in a model, you, you don't really want to be going that far in. So in the nose, we'll just tighten it a bit. Up around the head, we'll just smooth it a bit there. And that's it. That's how you use it when you're, you're calling it from this little toolbar function. But what if you're just modeling away um, so we'll get rid of all the tools. We don't want any of these. So we'll just completely get rid of it and go go back to, to nothing. Okay, so second way of doing it without having to go anywhere near that, that tool function is same again. Pick it up with your inner grip. Press the blue button and it's now activated. And now where you see the purple sphere attached to your, or just inside your inner grip, you can push up and down and make it larger and smaller. That has the same effect as calling the actual tool itself. So if you hover over a few, and then at that point, just pull down on your thumbstick. So you're basically just pulling on your dominant hand thumbstick down does exactly the same thing and you don't even need to call the you know the, the function itself so you, you're not even going to that tool menu so if I work around now bigger and smaller and the one thing that makes me use this more is that you've got two functions you've got pull down or push up and let me show you what happens there by zooming right in so basically down here I'm pulling down and it's tightening down and you can see what I can do here is I'm moving it around as I'm smoothing it so as you're going deeper in like this, you can get it to look pretty much how you want it by rotating it, moving it and smoothing it like so. But you can also use it as a pretty much as an inflate. So if I grab all of them in the corner and push up with the thumbstick, you get a thickening effect. You can see that it inflates. Now I've done it too much there in the corner, so I'll just have to go back in and smooth that down. Keep smoothing it down, smoothing it down tweaking it you can tweak individually and then you can take a group and you can say for example at this bottom here we want to maybe even do a crease in the corner of the eye like that push this one in so make you know tighten the eye really really nicely down like that and you can see how that's constructed the shape of the eye much much better and then just um, just grab it again I keep pressing it down by mistake and then just smooth that corner down like so. And if you look there now, we've got this really nice, clean, smooth area. Uh, we haven't affected the mesh. It's not. It's not smoothed the mesh down completely, but it has helped us to you know to define um, the surface level uh, a, a lot. See this this side of the eye here probably needs a little bit of work, so I might want to pull this out a bit. And then this cheek has gone too tight here. So just pull it down and tighten it down and see what that looks like. And there you go. That looks better. So that's the two ways that I use the smooth tool. There's lots of other little things that you can do with it. But if you get familiar with that, um, that will get you most of the way, you know, with, with this kind of function. 
Thank you so much for watching these videos and I hope you're enjoying using Gravity Sketch in VR. It's, it's a very unique tool and, it, and it's one of my favourite VR construction tools. It's probably the only good way to do subdivision modelling in VR at the moment. Um, and I know there are others, but this is the one that shines out above them all. So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you like it enough to give it a thumbs up, then why not subscribe to the channel and we can help you create in new and innovative ways.